Hello and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker and I'm your host. And on this show, we are talking about ways to take back your time and be more strategic and more purposeful in the way that you approach things. And today I'm excited to have Linda West with me. You know, Linda is known as the Oprah of San Diego. Uh, that's because she's so social and interviews everyone. Uh, Linda is, she's interviewed more than 200 people on her show, Living Live TV. And she's a master connector, a best-selling author of the Years for Fears, as well as a few other books, and she'll tell us about those. She's creator of Finish, Finish It Fast program, which we're going to hear about today, because finishing it fast is what we're all doing, right? Is what we want to do. And that's where she turns procrastinators into actionators. I like that. I like that. <laughs> And, and the Facebook Live Queen, having done more than, whoa, 2,700 Facebook Live videos. And that was probably an old number. So she's a mover and shaker. Linda, we are so excited to have you here with us. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Penny. I'm honored to be here. I can't wait to hear what we're going to get into talking about time. Yeah. Well, you know, so... I'm just writing down here that actionator. I want to come back to that point because that <laughs> is gone. So tell us just a little bit about, you know, Linda West and what, you know, that's your official bio intro, but tell us, you know, tell us something that you think the entrepreneurs in order to get connected to you can uh, appreciate about what you've gone through. Um, well, thanks for asking. I, um, at the age of 51, after working 49 jobs, Wow. And yeah, working as a legal secretary for 20 years, working for a judge in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, I realized that I was, after 49 jobs, right, I realized that I was just kind of like spinning my wheels and I wasn't doing what I was probably put here on earth to do. So I started doing some soul searching. I hired a life coach. And uh, after working with a life coach for about five months, I realized that um, corporate work was not for me. And so I came home one day from work and I told my husband, hey, I'm quitting my job. And, and this is it. We're going to figure out like what I'm supposed to do here. Now, that was in uh, 2014, November of 2014. And so in the last four years, I've been you know, spending my time trying to figure out well, what is it that I'm here to do? You know, what is my purpose? And, and it's kind of been an interesting journey because it's taken me through ups and downs, you know, sideways and everything just trying to figure it out. And, and through the journey, I've discovered that, you know, it's the journey. Like I know Harley Davidson says, you know, it's not the destination, it's the journey. And that's the journey I've been on is of, of discovering, you know, what is it that I have that can help people? And I think I just finally recently figured it out. And it's, it's been so awesome because when you figure that out, it's like things just start aligning. And that's what's cool about it. That's how you know you're in the flow, you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's been, it's been a great journey. The journey's not over by any means. Now it's the journey of learning, like, how do I then incorporate that into my life and then help others along the way? You know, that's so important. I, I, there could be a lot of people who are listening who are in a job that they really don't love, you know, and, you know, the thought of being more productive, right, is, is like, ew, to them in the context <laughs> yeah. In the context of they're doing something that they don't enjoy. So who wants to be, you know, more productive in an area that they don't enjoy? And, and I want to just point out to people is that being productive is doing things that you love. It's unproductive to be stuck in a job and wasting your time, wasting your years away, right? Do you feel like you, you wasted years away just because you just weren't doing what you were meant to do or what you love to do? Well, that's an interesting question because um, one thing I I have worked really hard on for this last four years is to change my mindset. So for me, I don't look at it as waste at all. You know, looking back, like, so many things I learned along the way. I met so many different kinds of personalities. You know, I worked with lawyers for 20 years, and people talk about lawyers and how you know lawyers have a bad rap, in my opinion. You know, so I learned how to work with all these different kinds of personalities, which is helping me now because totally. now I can take all those things that I learned from all those 49 jobs 
and I can apply it to what I'm doing now. I can relate to people who are frustrated on their job. I can relate to people who are frustrated driving in traffic every single day, feeling underappreciated or not appreciated at all. I can totally relate to that because I've experienced that. So that's actually one of the, the blessings I have is that I can take all of those experiences and apply them now to what I do. And I can you know, sympathize and empathize with those who are going through that. And then I can share with them how they can make that leap and live the life they truly want to live. We don't know when our last breath is gonna be. We do not know. So, you know, spending, like for me, spending my time doing things that I don't wanna do, that's not something I wanna do anymore. So I've made a conscious choice mm. to make sure that if I'm not happy doing something, that I shift it, I either shift it in my mind, or I actually remove myself from the situation and put myself into something that makes me happy. I love that. I, I, I really love that. And, and you know that I'm all about mindset as well. Yeah. And, and, and you're right. Every experience is a learning experience. It's something that we can grow from and it makes us who we are today. And that being said, like you said, then now you're making a choice to be more purposeful and you're, you're going to make it fun, whether it's, you know, something that, you know, maybe isn't, is a means to an end that, that isn't ultimately your favorite thing to do, but you want to do it because it brings you to, to another goal or, or else you don't do it. Right. So I, I love that. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned the word fun because it was four years ago. I remember it really well. I was um, putting on an event called, you know, like the last four years, I've tried so many different things, right? But I was putting on an event called Nonprofit Speaker Series, where I would bring um, nonprofit experts in to talk to nonprofits to help them grow. And I was standing there and I was getting ready to introduce the next speaker. And I said, you know what? I realized this morning that I want to spend the rest of my life having as much fun as possible, hanging out with positive and uplifting people who want to make a positive change on this planet. And when it came out of my mouth, I was like, oh my God, that sounds so superficial. <laughs> no, no, that was my first. <laughs> well, but in, in my mind it did because it was like I was making this declaration that I'm going to have fun, you know? And then afterwards, so, so many people came up to me and said, I love that that's what your life's mission is. And so, you know, now I say it proudly because it's, it's so cool that that's what I, I love having fun. So why wouldn't I want that to be something that I strive for on a daily basis? Absolutely. And, and it wears off and it, you know, then other people want to have fun. So, yeah. you know, and, and really, isn't that, you know, we could live our life with fun or without fun. So why not live it with <laughs> yeah. everything more fun? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's awesome. And, and, you know, coming back to the theme of the show is take back time. Well, imagine you know, how much time you're really taking back when you're having fun in what you're doing, even if you're washing dishes or you're doing, you know, do cutting the lawn, right? You can, you can make everything a game and make it fun in some way. So I like that. And uh, I'm going to pay more attention and be more purposeful with that, uh, you know, especially starting today. I mean, I have it in my, in my values and everything, but I think it's mm -hmm. also, like anything, it's something you have to remind yourself of because we can get we can get distracted in different ways. So we have to uh, continually bring ourselves back to remind ourselves of what's important. Yeah, and it's funny, we, uh, my husband and I just bought a, um, uh, what do you call it, a, a motor home. And last night was my first night sleeping in the motor home. And I woke up this morning to take my shower and I, I got in the shower, it's kind of funny because I, when we were looking at the shower from the outside without being inside of it, um, it looked awesome. And I got in there, I was like, oh my gosh, it's very short. <laughs> and I'm short, so that's a good thing. But then I got out of the shower and said, oh my gosh, where did I put the towels? I had a hand towel to dry myself off with. So the, I bring that up because my old me would have been like, rah, 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 you know, complaining. But the, the new me is like, okay, well, at least I have a hand towel. I'm so yeah. thankful and you to can, have a hand towel. You can dry <laughs> exactly. yourself off, right? It can be fun. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I always try to see the positive in things. You know, I have a shower. A lot of people don't have that. Yes. And so, you know, I'm you know, grateful for my life and the things that I have. And, and so I'm just trying to look at, you know, any situation that could potentially take me down the, the negative rabbit hole. I instead choose to take that other route and, and turn it into something positive. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, let's, let's get in and, and talk about, we were talking about focusing on what's important, right? That was a little bit of the, of the conversation. And so, 
you know, we were talking, you and I, and how we met was at uh, CEO Space, mm -hmm. uh, which is an event where people, entrepreneurs go to further develop their skills and their networks. And, and we were talking about a concept called time blocking. And yes. so, um, you know, I wanted to talk to people, you know, on the show who use different tools and different strategies and hear how are they using it? How is it benefiting them? And, you know, because I can talk about it, but that's only one perspective. I want to bring in multiple perspectives. So tell us, you know, a little bit about why time blocking is important to you and how you use it. Um, well, first of all, is it was hard for me to discover something that worked for me. I've tried so many different things. I've tried, you know, the passion planner. I've tried this planner and that planner. I've tried online tools. I've tried so many different tools and they just weren't fitting for me. And that's one thing that's important is because somebody will say to you, this works, you got to do it. But if it's not working for you, it doesn't work. Right. And so when Penny introduced to us at CEO Space, I think it was um, almost three years ago, yeah. um, in 2015, it was in 2015. That's and right. when she introduced the concept of time blocking, I immediately thought, this isn't going to work because nothing else had worked. Mm -hmm. But she took us through this exercise that helped me to see that I really thought I had 36 hours in a day. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, no, what? <laughs> yeah, what the heck? I really think that I'm doing all this stuff, you know? And so it was really cool, first of all, to break that down. And then what, uh, what I'm doing, Penny is I'm just using my outlook calendar Yeah. and I, I block everything out that I do. So my, if you look at my calendar, you will pretty much see, 24 hours blocked out because I block out my sleep time. I block out my time. Like if I'm going to go to the movies with my husband, I block out my drive time. I, you know, I always count, you know, traffic into that. So I'm always giving myself buffers in case yeah. I, in case I'm wrong, but I never do so that. You're not before. late, right? Yeah. Cause how many it, people it, are late and stressed out because they don't account for some of those times, right? The driving yeah. time or, the transition or give yourself time to go to the bathroom or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Taking showers. Like I didn't give myself, I didn't, I wasn't blocking that time out. Eating, eating takes time. Preparing your food takes time. Everything that we do takes yeah. time. And so I, I even block out, I usually will like prior to this interview, for example, I blocked out a half hour prior and I call it prep. Mm -hmm. And then after the interview, I block out a half hour called post. And so every time, every time I do something, I have a prep and a post for myself to have that buffer just in case I need it. And so the time blocking, what the time blocking has done for me is first of all, it's, it's relieved a lot of stress that I had related to time. And not only that, I'm much more productive because I'm actually doing the things that are on my calendar because I've blocked out the time. It's, it's been the best, best tool that I've, that I've been, um, I, I can't say discovered, right? That you shared with me. It's been well, the best. Yeah, you discovered, I didn't make it up, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm just sharing it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So the, that's like, I have that and then Calendly, you know, that's for uh -huh. my calendaring. Those right. two tools have saved me hours and hours and hours each week. And they both have helped me to become much more productive. That's awesome. What would you say, you know, there's people and I encounter a lot of people like this too, who, um, who just say, well, that's too structured. Like, you know, I, I like to be free spirited and, and my stuff will just get done. What would you say to that person? Cause maybe that's the way you were before you started this. Exactly. I have totally free spirit. You know, um, you know, anybody who has 49 jobs is not concerned with you know, a lot of stuff, right? You know, we've moved a lot of places too. So I'm t definitely a free spirit. We're, we're living in a, we're living in a motor home right now so that we can you know, get up and move anytime we want. Yeah. And so that's, that's who I am. But this, what this actually did was to give me more freedom. And yeah. the reason is because it seems like, ah, oh, you know, it's so militant, but it's not. What it does is it helps you to see how much time it takes you to do things so yeah. that you can enjoy more time having that freedom time. Because if you, if you want to have more freedom, walk out freedom time. You yeah. know, it's, it's so simple because then you're like, I got the stuff done that I need to get done. Awesome. Now I have all this free time. And so it really actually gives you more freedom by being somewhat structured. You know, it's, it does. it's, crazy. it's almost paradoxical, right? People don't it is. that, but 
planning and, and this type of time blocking will give you more freedom and more flexibility than if you didn't do it, right? And, and that seems mm -hmm. weird, but you're right. It's, and part of that is the reduction of stress that you talked about, because we don't have to keep right. it in our head and figure it out. That's, that's like energy that's trapped, right? Because you're not giving your full resources to the moment because you're, you still have that whole list of other things that you have to do and you're not yeah. sure when you're going to do it. Right. So, um, so that's, that's such an important point. So people who are listening, this will give you back more flexibility and more, more freedom. If you really just take those things that are most important for you and, and, and structure them. hundred percent. I was surprised because first of all, I was surprised that I kept doing it mm -hmm. and now it's been three years and I've been Why doing, did you it. Keep doing it. Well, Let's because it was working. It was working. Because it was and working. But now here's the thing, right? It, it works no matter what, right? But do I work it? So it, it was working and I was working it. And that's what is so awesome about it because it's the first thing. Like I said, you know, I tried the, like, Pat, everybody's like, you got to do the passion planner. That's the one. There's one called the Evo planner that um, is based on your personality type. And somebody who is using the Evo planner is like, this one's perfect for you because you're an alchemist and this is made for alchemists. And I did it literally for a week and a half. And I went back to my time blocking because time right. blocking works for me. It works. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us about, you know, so obviously you've created a program called Finish It Fast, right? So mm -hmm. where did this come from? And, you know, tell us a little bit about that because that seems like a, a really great take back time type of uh, a program. Yeah, you know, they say uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And so I had my own necessity. And that was that I had become a seminar junkie. <laughs> and, you know, I attended so many seminars, I watched so many webinars. You know, when I first started entrepreneurship, I didn't even know what the word entrepreneur was. And so I really you know, went on this journey trying to discover, like, what does all this mean? How do I make a business? How do I run a business? How do I make money? And all these different things. So I you know, attended seminars, webinars, you know, teleseminars, I, so many different things. But what happens when you attend those? You come back with a big booklet of stuff right. that goes and it sits on the shelf. Because now you got to go attend the next seminar. Right. So you don't have time to do that stuff. So I found myself just having a shelf full of all this amazing material, amazing material. And then you know, about two years into my you know, entrepreneur journey, I was like, oh my gosh, I have all this stuff and I'm not doing any of it. So I uh, called up a couple friends and I said, hey, I want to start a mastermind, but I want to run it differently than any other mastermind out there. What I want to do is I want us to meet, at this time we'd met in person, now we do it online, but I want to meet in person, and at the very beginning of the session, I want us to all tell each other what we're going to work on, and then for the next three hours, we actually work on it and get it done. Imagine mm -hmm. that, getting it done. Right. So at that time, the program was called GSD, which stood for Get Shit Done, mm -hmm. and I, I have since changed the name because um, I wanted to um, trademark Get Shit Done, but it wasn't trademarkable. Right. So. So I changed the name of the program to finish it fast because basically this program, if you have something that you're putting off and you want to do it, the way it's structured is that you are being held accountable right then and there. That's and perfect. that's why it works. Yeah, because but, you're, you're giving the space and time right there to, I mean, that makes sense, right? Is, is, is no excuses. You're sitting there with a group of people and you've probably got a report on what you did at the end of the session, right? Is that yes, part of yes, it? it? Exactly. So you come back. So we're on a Zoom call, and um, so everybody reports in, says what they're going to do, mm -hmm. and then like the last 15 minutes, of, so it's a three-hour block. The last 15 minutes of that three-hour block, everybody checks back in and says, I got it done or I didn't, mm -hmm. which is cool. What's cool about this is it kind of helps me to be able to tell the percentages of you know what people are actually accomplishing. And so about 80 to 85% of the time, they finish what they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So imagine, um, so I was, I belong to a lot of mastermind programs. I belong to accountability programs and none of them were structured in a way that worked for me because what would happen is at the end of a mastermind call, I got all these brilliant ideas and then my life happened. And then I'd get to the end of the week, you know, time to check back in with everybody next week. Hey, did you get that stuff done? No, no, you know, 
it happens so often to so so many people, like almost every single person in the mastermind groups I belong to or the accountability programs I belong to were that same way. Right. So I said, how can I change this and make it so that people are successful? Because I really want people in my program to be successful. So I said, what if I sit there with them? I got to work anyway. So what if I just sit there with them for three hours and watch them work? You know, and, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes we jump off the call and jump back on. You know, sometimes we're there the whole time. But, you know, at the end of the three hours, the accomplishments that people finish, it's amazing and astounding. One woman finished a book that had sat on her shelf for 20 years. Awesome. One that she's it. writing or one that she's reading? She had, oh, yeah, good question. <laughs> she wrote it. She wrote it 20 years ago. Okay. But she said, I have one last chapter. And she says, I'm going to finish that chapter. And in three hours, she finished that chapter. And she felt like the huge weight was lifted you know, after right. 20 years. It's so important. You know, the, the value of, of that program is that it's so important to hold ourselves accountable. Because mm -hmm. it's easy not to do the things that we want to do that are best for us, right? And it could be some yeah. kind of self-sabotage. Maybe she was afraid of what people would think, and that's why she didn't want to finish the book. But it's kind of like it puts your feet to the fire right there and then. And if you know someone's watching, right, we, we show up differently when somebody's watching and when they're right. accountable. <laughs> And so, you know, I work with a trainer for that very reason, because I wouldn't show up to the gym. I'd come up with an excuse that something else would become more important. Right. So it is really important to me. For some reason, I wouldn't do it, right? So mm -hmm. those kinds of programs, that's, that is fantastic because it's the same kind of concept, but for work, right? For, for those, or for those passion projects is it's a right. trainer who holds you accountable and stands there while you do it, right? Isn't that what a trainer does is I work out and he stands there and I pay for that. So, exactly. but I'll do it every time because it gets me results. So I totally, I think this is a, a brilliant model that, that you're bringing in a different, you know, very different from other forms, like you said, of mastermind and coaching that'll coach mm -hmm. you call and then you'll go away and do it or not do it. Right. And it, it was funny you mentioned, you know, the, like the personal trainer thing, because uh, there was uh, one of the women in the group, she said, I'm so glad I'm doing this because we were on our che we were checking in at the end of the call. I'm so glad I'm doing this because my husband came in and interrupted me. I said, I can't. Linda's watching me. I was like, brilliant. It works. You know? It works. It works. Right. And when something works, then, uh, you know, embrace it and, and work it, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. So how do people get a hold of you about this, about getting involved in this program with you and, and, and who's a good fit for it? Oh, well, a good fit for it is, you know, I'm really working with mostly with women. So you know, women entrepreneurs who are, who are putting things off and they're beating themselves up over it because a lot of times that's what happens is, is sitting on the shelf. Every time we look at it, we say, oh, I'm going to do that. Or even if we're not consciously saying that our subconscious is saying that. So the finish it fast program, you can find that at finish it fast.com. And it's kind of funny, the name, right? Cause it's finish it fast, but I did it as finish it <laughs> and then fast. Uh -huh. uh, I was going to do it different ways, you know, so the word is kind of fun to play with, but, you know, finishing, finishing things, just um, completing something, you know, gives you this sense of accomplishment. Totally. So, you know, What's well, a dopamine? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a high five. You're high fiving yourself. It's a hit of dopamine that keeps you in, in motion. Yeah. And then also the group, right? Cause then you have, yeah. you have the group of people who are there, you know, um, cheering you on, wanting you to succeed. And that's so important because many people that I know don't have that positive reinforcement in their lives. So just having, you know, having this group that wants them to succeed and, and is, you know, behind them and, you know, pulling them through and stuff. It's so important and so helpful. And it really has helped me, even me being the leader of the group, I still have the group that is, you know, helping me, you know, make it through my things that yeah. I need to work on. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing, uh, you know, lots of really great nuggets that the audience can take away for yes. taking back time. Yeah. And just remember, you know, life is short. We don't know when our last breath is. Um, I, this was so important for me because when my mom, um, towards my mom's 
last days of her life, she expressed how many regrets she had for things she hadn't done. And that's why for me, like if, if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it for very long, you know, because life is short. I don't want to get to the end and say, I have all these regrets of things I didn't do. Instead, I can say, I'm so glad I lived the life I wanted to live. Now, the life that I'm living might not, like, people might look at it and say, that's not fun. But you know what? For me, it is. And right. that's what matters. I'm yeah. living my life the way I want to live it. And hopefully I'm making a positive impact on other people's lives because that's really important to me. Absolutely. We, we each get to choose what's right for us and, yes. and appreciate that it's going to be different for everyone. Just like you said, also for tools and strategies, there isn't one size fits all. You have to find what works for you. Yes, exactly. So thank you so much for being here. It was great having thank you on the show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Penny. And thank you all for being here. You were awesome. I know you were taking notes and you took some stuff away and that is going to be valuable. I'd love it if you, you know, would share any comments uh, either now or after putting some of these things into practice, you know, how they might be of, have, have served you in your work life or private life and definitely check out Linda's finish it fast program, especially if, you know, you are, have something that's on the shelf. What do you call it? Shelf development. If you've got any shelf development, let's get that off the shelf and get that finished. Yes, I mean, let's do it. Let's do it. My name is Penny Zanker and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode.